Now, real quickly, we're gonna go over abuse and neglect. <clears throat> I've already kind of touched on this. Unfortunately, domestic violence is a very real thing. It affects a lot of people. Like we were talking about, it affects one third of all women. Not, not necessarily domestic abuse, but sexual assault. Us, abuse towards kids comes in lots of different forms. It can be physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, or the most common neglect. Neglect is by far the most common form of abuse that kids suffer from. Now, here's something that might be surprising to you. Men, I think we can all agree, men are definitely more violent creatures than women. Men have testosterone. Testosterone and epinephrine are a potent combination. Guys, you all know what I'm talking about. Now, some people are more prone to anger and violent outbursts than others. Obviously, there's a slight genetic component and a huge cultural component. But you guys will know that it's not uncommon for us to get a full head of steam. It's a lot easier for guys to get a full head of steam than it is for women. Now, I'm not saying women can't get just as mad as men because they can. And there's been lots of cases where women have killed their own kids in cases of postpartum depression. But that's a rarity. Those cases tend to make national news because they're very rare. M men are programmed to love women biologically. We're very attracted to women. In fact, Molly, just in case you're wondering, literally everything men do is for women, more or less. The way we dress, the jobs we pursue, the hobbies we pursue, everything we do is more or less is for women. Women are biologically programmed to love children, especially their own children, kind of that mama bear complex. This is the most efficient way to have biological creatures be raised. This is the same way in most animal kingdoms as well. So it's the same with humans. So while adults are, sorry, while males are more aggressive and violent than females, women are actually the number one propagators of abuse towards children than men are. Why is that? Well, it's a twofold thing. One, neglect is the most common type of abuse. Women aren't necessarily gonna be violent towards their kids, but they'll be neglectful or perhaps emotionally abusive. And the other part of this is a part that I'm sure you guys may have thought about. It's that men, it's a, there's a lot more absentee fathers than there are absentee mothers. So there's this whole numbers component to it. It's much less likely that a woman is going to leave her children than a man would leave his children. Unfortunately, that's the case. Like I was saying, biologically, men love women. Women love children. Children love, I don't know, Santa Claus. Domestic violence usually follows a pattern. Arguments and verbal abuse that escalate to physical and sexual abuse, and that can go all the way to denial and apologetic phase. It's happened to me, I'll, like full disclosure, I've had issues with anger and rage in my life. Years and years ago, I remember I had a printer and I was trying to print something and my printer wasn't working. And I remember I was alone. There was no one else with me. My printer wasn't working. And I just flew into a rage. I was so mad. I remember just smashing my printer, just breaking it into so many pieces, throwing it across the room into the ground, breaking the crap out of my printer just because of this rage. So I recognize that that's a thing inside of me. Not every guy has that but it's something that's been inside of me. So I've had to admit to it, realize that I had problems that I wasn't facing, things I was pushing to the side, and then I made changes. Do I still experience anger? Oh yeah, all the time. Everybody does. But it's the way that we mitigate it and deal with our anger and our stress that, that determines how we react to it. Everybody's gonna get angry. The world is going to upset you every day. So the, we can't control that. What we control is our response to it. I'm happy to say I've not had any anger outbursts in years, but I still get angry at things. And I know that that's always inside of me and it's always something that I have to be aware of. Maybe you guys have experienced something similar to that, maybe not. Everyone's dealing with their own personal demons. But it's very likely that they're gonna feel bad about things and apologize. So when someone is angry, they're suffering, okay? Suffering causes hate. It's, I don't mean to be all Yoda on you guys, but suffering causes hate or it causes anger and anger leads to hate and hate leads to the dark side. Now, 
realistically, when we're suffering, we lash out and we try to make others suffer because there's this cathartic feeling that if they suffer, someone who hurts me suffers, then I'll feel better. And maybe you do for a split second. But ultimately, when you bring more suffering into the world, you're not diminishing your own suffering. You're just increasing someone else's suffering. And that's not going to make you feel any better. So recognizing that will help break that chain if you guys are also experiencing problems with this. By the way, if anybody does have a problem with this and they want to talk to me after class, I would be happy to share with you things I've done that have made very positive affect or very positive changes in my own life regarding this and a few other things I've dealt with. Nobody's perfect. And I'm not, I, I'm not afraid to admit my flaws and my faults in my life. Women, on, like we said, are the most likely to get battered and they're also the most likely to propagate abuse. Remember that abuse creates abuse, okay? People come from broken homes are more likely to enter into broken homes. People who are abused as children are more likely to abuse their children. I wish we could stop this cycle and lots of people do, but not everyone can. It takes a lot of work. And the earlier you get started on it, the better results you'll have, ultimately. I think it really has to do with that whole neuroplasticity. If you can learn to juggle and solve a Rubik's Cube, you can learn to control your violent or your neglectful or your abusive affects. All these numbers are really sad. A third of visits to EDs each year are women who are battered, emergency departments. Four to six million Four to six million women are battered by a spouse or partner. More women are hurt by domestic violence than vehicles, rapes, and assaults combined. Half of all homeless women and children are homeless due to domestic violence. 15 to 25% of pregnant women are battered and more likely to suffer of miscarriage. 75% of re assaults reported to law enforcement occurred after the couples had separated. Breakups are hard, man. Between 50 and 70% of men who batter their partners also abuse their children. It's the sixth most dangerous emergency call for law enforcement officers. You better believe it's way up there for us too. If you suspect something, you need to report it. The, another really bad ones are in 85 to 95% of responses to domestic homicides, law enforcement has been called to the same address at least once during the year before. In more than 50% of the cases, law enforcement had been there five times or more in the last year before someone got killed. I know a lot of cops and they'll tell you that they're going to the same people over and over again for domestic abuse and domestic violence has gone up significantly with COVID. That makes sense. When people are around each other more, they get frustrated with each other more. And I don't know if you guys have been paying any attention to the news, but we have never been more divided than we are now. Right. And that's been a big problem lately in the last few years. The biggest piece of advice I can give to you guys, no matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on, I can respect both sides. I've been on both sides. Each one of my parents falls on different sides of the political spectrum. I love both my parents equally. But here's the thing. If you feed into this anger and you feed into this hate, you're just creating more of it in the universe. Delete your Facebooks. <clears throat> Characteristics of abusive relationship. Low self-esteem. Intense need for love and affection, alcohol or drug involvement very, very frequently. Big time with alcohol. Financial problems, not always. What were those, what were those brothers? Um, oh, damn. Those brothers that were really rich in the California in like the, this was like 20 years ago and they killed their parents like with shotguns. And then, yeah, the Mendez brothers, that was it. Yeah, they were very rich so rich that their parents literally took them on a shark fishing trip the day before they murdered their parents with shotguns. So does that mean that they were abused? I mean, yeah, a lot of evidence came out that maybe they were sexually and emotionally and, and physically abused by their parents. But again, does this justify murder? No, nothing justifies murder in my mind. I don't, I'm not even a fan of capital punishment, to be on, completely honest. I'm a big fan of chemical castration of criminals that cannot be rehabilitated, but I'm not a fan of capital punishment. <clears throat> Injury description can sometimes be inaccurate, incorrect, may be given to protect the abuser. How did you fall? I fell off my bike. I fell down the stairs. These are common things people say. You need to look at the injuries and you need to report them. Now, I'll give you guys a note. When you're filling out your reports, certain things might seem like they make sense. They're not necessarily subjective statements. You can't say, 
child looks like they've been abused because that's clearly subjective. That's your opinion. What you can say is we have bruises in this area, this area, in this area. Child, you can even say stuff like child is more quiet when in the presence of their parents. You're not necessarily saying anything or implying anything. You're just stating a fact that you noticed. All right. That's an objective fact. Now, let's talk about something we can say, which is patient has bruises in various states of healing. Is that a scientific fact? The answer is no, it's not. You can't say that they have bruises in various states of healing because there's no scientific conclusion for like phases that bruises go through as they're healing. Bruise, um, bruise appearances depend entirely on the depth of the injury, the like the strength of force, the kinematics of the force on that injury, all of these things combined. So some bruises, you guys will know, they'll turn like bright yellow and purple and black and some are very slight. Some will last days, some will last a couple hours. That all, it all depends on the amount of force. So you can put that they have multiple bruises in various stage, various colors and sizes in various locations of their bodies and then list, list them all out. This is not a fun thing to talk about, but this is things that we do need to cover. Documentation needs to cover all of the precise stuff. Now, we're not necessarily going to see huge, huge numbers of cases of child abuse. What we are gonna see a lot of is elder abuse. Big one from this comes from, we run at a lot of, of uh, nursing homes. Um, um, some of you guys, like I'm sure Phil, you're not very familiar with this being in the, in the military aspect, but in EMS 911, most of our patients are over, over the age of 60, okay? Most of them. A lot of them come from nursing home calls, independent living facilities, dependent living facilities, um, dementia care wards, things like that, all right? Now, when we get there, a lot of if you guys are working in the field, you'll know that if you work in an area with a lot of these nursing homes, you'll tend to see the same ones over and over and over again. This is not a coincidence. Sometimes it's because they take on the hardest patients, right? They'll take on ventilatory support patients, patients on multiple IV drips, and they're just taking on higher risk patients. You need to assess and see the level of care that they're getting, how many nurses to patient ratio, things like that. If you're going to the same places over and over again, you're seeing a lot of these problems that could have been prevented or things that like, oh yeah, he had a, why, is there, why does he have these bruises? Oh, he had a fall two days ago, but he's fine. You need to report it. I've reported more elder abuse cases than I have child abuse cases in my career because we just are gonna run on more elders than we are on children. I will say that child abuse cases, they, they affect me more than elder abuse cases not because I don't have as much compassion for the elderly, just because, you know, I have compassion for both kids and um, people that aren't, that need full supportive care. They're not able to, to care for themselves. And they're not always able to express what's going on around them, which is a big problem. Neglect financial abuse is another big one. It happened to my grandma recently. Um, um, the big one is like, People will scam elderly all the time. There's always that joke about, you know, the Nigerian prince lost all his money and just needs your bank account to store his millions in. And he'll live, give you a million at the end of it. What happened to my grandma was, um, this was actually a few years ago. I was living in Peru at the time. or I'd just gotten back from Peru. I can't remember. And uh, my grandma got a call from someone claiming to be me. And then they, they was like, I have to go, grandma. I have to, you have to talk to the commandant. And then they handed the phone to someone with an accent. And that person said, we have your grandson. He was caught smuggling cocaine through Mexico and you need to send us $3,000 or we're going to put him in a gulag or something, some nonsense like that. Now my grandma, thankfully, this is not the one that had the strokes and died, but my other grandma, she's a smart woman. She was, she knew that it was nonsense. She knew I wasn't in Mexico and she knew if I was in Mexico, I probably would not be trying to smuggle cocaine. So she didn't fall for that. But the fact is that people will fall for that, right? Unfortunately, financial elder abuse is one of the most common types of abuse. We're not necessarily going to notice that or be able to report it, but if you see something, say something. All right. Physical, financial, psychological, and then neglect. 
all 50 states have elder abuse statutes. With child abuse, very similar things. Neglect is the failure to provide food, shelter, medical care, or emotional support. There's a lot of absentee parents out there, unfortunately. Sometimes both are absent, sometimes just one. It's very difficult to raise kids, especially if you're a single parent. You have to work full time to support yourself, and now you have to support someone else who can't really financially support or can't really financially help you out other than through child support or government stimulus checks. And even then, it's not that much, right? I mean, we all got $1,200, one time, a one time payout of $1,200 in order to get us through all this COVID if we're not working in the field, which um, I think you guys know is certainly not enough. And the other part of this is they got $500 for everyone under 18. Now, $500, is that gonna cover all the needs for three months for someone under 18? Absolutely not. But that's what we got. A lot of types of abuse can cause death. Now, the most common characteristics of an abuser are female, more likely than males, because females generally tend to spend more time with their kids than males, usually in their mid-20s, poor, uneducated, depressed, or other um, psychological or behavioral problems and prior abuse. Unfortunately, abuse begets more abuse. Can't escape that. 